Hey guys, Popblade Plays here, back at it again with another video, and today I'm going to be ranking the carriers in Galaxy. Every single one of the standard carriers, none of the limited carriers. Um, but uh, yeah, that's going to be what we're doing, we should have done this earlier, but let's just get right into the video. And of course, I'll be covering generally what the carriers are like and what makes them, what puts them in their place. <sighs> now, we're going to start off with the first one, the Borealis Easy S+. Plus. This is superior to superior. Tanky, really high damage, great fighters and a sustainable amount of them. Only major downside is the cost, which is actually lowered to, I think, around 400 to 500,000 credits. The Borealis is currently one of the best ships in the build menu. Uh, next, we're going to have the Executioner. I'm going to put that in S tier. It's, the, it's a great PvP ship. Slightly weaker than a Dreadnought in terms of firepower for its own weaponry but definitely more tanky than most dreadnoughts. And it also has two powerful fighters, which allow you, if both of them are used, to do basically a storm of spinal when they're recalled. Spinals, uh, if you have people in them, or just let them go free and attack whatever, and you can tear down most dreadnoughts with an executioner, no problem. It's not even that expensive. It's great. Definitely doesn't need any nerfs, though, because it is still pretty expensive. There are no cheap carriers other than the uh, Vanguard. Anyways, uh, next carrier, the Hevnetir. I'm going to put this as an A tier. Now, a lot of people might not be happy that I'm putting it in the A tier, because a lot of people say the, the Hevnetir is the only good carrier, which is not at all true. Um, but anyways... So, with eight heavy turrets, six of them, or four of them, or something, no, six of them being heavy flax, which are really good, and a battleship fighter, what could make the Hev possibly not an easy S plus choice? Well, the battleship fighter really isn't that good. It's, it's a glorified battle cruiser. It's just got a couple of medium turrets and some spinals. It's just a glorified battle cruiser. That's all it is. Nothing too special about its maneuverability or weaponry. It's just it's just a bit of a tanky battle cruiser. That's all it is. And we've already seen plenty of other battle cruisers. Um, it has two Nighthawks, I believe, but they do basically nothing. They can be completely unused, and your damage would barely change. And its health is very squishy for a carrier. The hev that the hev main carrier, the Hevnetir itself, that is, uh, doesn't have all that much health. It's on par with average dreadnoughts, uh, and it is very pricey. So with the Elena's fighter, you're going to be doing really good in PvP, but. <sighs> The speed of the carrier itself isn't very special. The line of sight is questionable. It's not really that special. But it is still a really good ship, so it definitely gets A tier. It's just not crazy. Icarus, I'm going to put in C tier. With the fighters combined with the turrets and the health, the Icarus is really good. It should be A tier on heavy with Hevnetir or S tier with Executioner, but in actuality it's really not. It, it has really poor line of sight, the fighters struggle to get out of the fighter bay, and while they're very strong fighters, it's very easy to kill them because they're actually pretty big and bulky of fighters as well, despite their very, very high speed and damage, and they have almost no health. They're very squishy. Fighters half their size have double their health. <sighs> and once you strip down the... Strip away the fighters. Once you just take those two fighters that it has away. Say they get killed or no one's piloting them. Or they can't get out of the hangar. The fighter bay. 
you take the turret's line of sight and strength into account, and everything else about the Icarus, it really is just a meat shield. That's all it ends up being. It's decent, so it gets C tier, but it's not going to get anything above C tier, because when you actually use it, well, it can be very good if you use it really well. <sighs> Most of the times, it, it's not going to go anywhere, unless you're really good with it. Nimitz gets... <sighs> Nimitz is the first hard one to place on this list. I'm not sure if it should get S plus or S tier. I'm going to put it as S plus. You know what? Just S plus. So Nimitz is one of the, at the time I'm making this video and this list, one of the two carriers uh, other than Prometheus, well, including Prometheus, that are not on the big build menu. They're semi-limited carriers. The Nimitz was removed from the build menu for lag reasons, and it will be re-added once its model and meshes have been optimized. So for now, it's a prize ship, technically limited, because it's unobtainable in any way right now other than refunds. But it still is a standard build menu carrier. Now, the reason I put Nimitz as S+, plus, or why I'm struggling to place it into superior or superior pluses because <sighs> it has good turrets. They're not amazing. It's got some mediums and a couple heavies. The fighters are just godlike. It's a mobile fleet. I'll tell you, the Nimitz, it has, I think, 13 fighters. All of them are basically advanced ships in their own classes just without warp. Its interceptors are... Their speed is godlike. They're flat, flatter than paper, even. Impossible to hit for almost any turret unless you're at the point blank. Like, literally have a light turret at point blank. If it's moving full speed, you can just give up on hitting it. They can technically solo siege a base because I've orbited bases and I've gone as close as 200 studs away from max level star bases before they were even nerfed and got hit like zero times the interceptors are godlike for speed and they do really good damage so their health is pretty irrelevant because you just won't kill them unless they slow down uh the instigator fighters uh are stronger than their build menu instigator a counterparts and in fact were the original. Um, they have six large cannons. Can you believe that? Six large cannons as a spinal, and I think one light flak cannon, or just light standard light cannon as a turret. So the turret firepower on it's pretty irrelevant, but the spinals are great. Now, unfortunately, that's it's only spinals, so it doesn't do almost anything to shields, and it's horrible at fighting smaller ships because it's a spinal-based ship. The health is great for a battlecruiser anyway, but it's nothing special. And the speed is also great for a battlecruiser, but it's, again, nothing special. So what makes it crazy is that it has three instigators and three interceptors. So the instigators come in after the interceptors and the foxfires have done their damage, and the foxfires are just all... Oh, it has seven foxfires. Each one is super fast and has enough damage with its three large phasers and damage per second to hull an entire subjugator super capital in under five minutes. One foxfire can do that because people underestimate how strong spinals are, and three large phasers, that's that's really good. So you soften something up with the uh, Foxfires and Interceptors, that Interceptors do a bit of hull and shield damage. But once their shields are down because of the Foxfires and Interceptors, the Instigators roll in and tear them down with the large cannons. But the reason I'm not putting the mitts in S plus tier... No, I'm leaving it in S+, but the reason I almost put it in just normal S tier is because 
Um, its health is average for a carrier. It's n exceptional in no way. Well, it's definitely more than most dreadnoughts have. It's nothing special. And the turrets on it aren't very amazing. So if you only have, like, two pilots or something, you can fight a dreadnought, all right? But it's not going to be an easy win. Not unless the pilots of, like, one or two fighters are good. And because it's so hard to use all the fighters. It has 13 fighters. That means you need 14 pilots for the Nimitz to reach its full potential. 14 players. The Borealis is more reasonable because, well, it has not nearly as much maximum damage output as the Nimitz, and the Blitzes are stronger than the Foxfires in that they have three huge phasers instead of three larges. It only has six of them, so that's much more manageable. You only need seven pilots in total to get the Borealis' full damage output. <sighs> but the Nimitz still has great potential. And here's a little, uh, a little known thing. If you drift right with it, you can get basically infinite speed. Yeah, that's right. You can get a carrier distracting star bases with its speed. That's right. And that's pretty big. Anyways, Nyx, easy S plus tier. Six heavy turrets, godlike health. Like, I'm talking 26,000 health. This thing has quadruple what some dreadnoughts have. And triple what most have. <laughs> like, that's just super good tanking. Plus the damage resistance factored in. It's just really, really good. Uh, the movement speed is decent. The turn speed is pretty good for a carrier. Uh, the fighters are also pretty good fighters. They do great damage. You have two, three fighters. You're doing dreadnought damage with just the fighters alone. So long as two or three of them are out. And it has eight in total. So it's still mm, somewhat manageable. It's not out of the question. A Nyx is the ideal, the prime carrier. Sustainable fighters, great tanky, but also not overpowered fighters. But they still do a lot of damage. What am I talking about? The Nyx itself, godlike health. It's, it's super tanky. It is the pinnacle of tankiness in carriers other than the Prometheus. Great turret firepower with six heavy turrets. Um, and then it would be... After that, it's just the fighters, and it has great fighters. It's just the standard carrier. It is the ideal carrier. And it's not crazy overpriced like the Borealis or the Prometheus were. It's a bit less expensive than the Borealis. Uh, if I had to choose between a Borealis and a Nyx, I would choose the Nyx, just for its health pool. But, lucky for me, I have all three of these. And a Hefnatir, and a Nicarus, and I used to have an Executioner until I sold it. Anyways, let's move on. Prometheus, this is an easy F tier. Yeah. 27,500 health, and you got an F tier. How do you do that? You have three Battlecruiser fighters, and you got F tier... That's right, go sit in your corner of shame, struggling to beat a friggin' Leviathan in a fight. Yeah, Prometheus just a waste of time. I only bought it for the video, that's the only reason I got it. <sighs> like, dude. You look at its stats, and you think, wow, this thing has three battlecruisers on it. It has 27,000 health. That's a thousand, slightly over a thousand more than the Nyx has, because it has, like, 27,500 health. It's got good speed, like really good speed for a carrier, better than some dreadnoughts even have. It's massive and intimidating. When it explodes, it wipes out a fleet because the explosion is so huge. And the turrets, they're nothing special. It's got a couple of heavies and a bunch of mediums. But sure, that that's understandable, right? No, no. Prometheus, the fighters are unsustainable. Sure, they do a lot of damage, but they die in, like, a minute if a Dreadnought just decides to kill them. And if you're underneath the Prometheus, you you basically have a free kill. You're going to have two sh turrets shooting at you. That's it. Straight up, I've tested the Prometheus with three fighters against a Leviathan and an Apocalypse. 
Um, the apocalypse was before the Prometheus health buff, which was very minor, so it still doesn't matter much. And the Leviathan I've tested twice, both before and after the health buff. And every time I've tested it, the Dreadnought just killed the fighters first in like under a minute and was pretty low on health, stayed be below my Prometheus the entire time and won the fight the first two times, which was the Apocalypse versus Prometheus and the Leviathan versus Prometheus. The Apocalypse won the first time, the Leviathan lost, but the but my Prometheus barely won. In the second fight, after the health buff, my Prometheus did win, but barely. So, if a Prometheus at its full power can barely match up against build menu dreadnoughts, when this thing easily costs one and a half million credits, which was far more than quadruple the cost of most dreadnoughts, <sighs> that's an F tier right there. You don't deserve anything higher than F tier, dude. Like, just just stay in F tier. You're not even a freighter anymore. The nine thousand cargo hold was removed. Like, dude, just just, just use a Nyx. It's it's a Prometheus, but but better. Namitz has three battle cruisers and way more damage than you, dude. Like, just stay in F tier. Right, I'm gonna stop complaining about how horrible the Prometheus is right now, even though it's. it's that's look really good. Let's go to the Rapture. First B tier carrier on the list. Bunch of railguns, very good for siege. Decent health, nothing special. Price is affordable, but still expensive because it's a carrier. Uh, no one ever gets in the fighters, which is the main problem. Otherwise, this would actually be a decent PvP ship. And just. If the fighters were ever used on a Rapture, I'd put it on A tier, but no one ever uses the fighters for some reason for Rapture, so it's just getting B. Although the fighter strength is pretty good. I think it has... Um... Frenzies? They might not be Frenzies. They're whatever the Rhino has, or used to have. I don't know. Uh, they're, they're the Black Furies. They're the Dark Furies. Uh, but yeah, that, that's about it. Good for siege, but no one ever uses the fighters, so it kind of has to stay as just a siege dread. That's right, dread. It's, it's basically just a bit of a tanky railgun dreadnought. Still B tier, though. I'd recommend you get it if you want. Revelation. I haven't seen almost anything good out of Revelation lately, but I've looked at the stats and... Unlike Prometheus, which looks like it has good stats, I can actually understand these stats being good in gameplay. I'm going to put it as... <sighs> I'm going to put it as S tier. No, I'm going to put it as... Yeah, I'm going to put it as S tier. A uh, couple of fighters, handful of fighters. The fighters are decent. They're not overpowered or anything. They're mainly for support, although they can do about the damage of an extra extra dreadnought on shields maybe a bit more if you have all of them used and it's not too far-fetched to use them since it only has a handful a uh, bunch of heavy turrets and i think one light turret it's got eight medium turrets and or eight heavy turrets and one light turret light turrets kind of negligible but i help i guess it helps against weaker things uh, heavy turrets are great for pvp its turn speed is decent its health is actually pretty good and tanky it's just a standard build menu dreadnought, except you can spawn it at lower loyalty, and it's more expensive. But hey, you get a bit more health out of it, and slightly more firepower, so... And that is without counting the fighters. With the fighters, it's really good. So I'm going to put it as S tier, just because it's... It and the Executioner are the ideal PvP carriers just because of their dreadnought-like semblance. Resemblance. Rhino is going to go A tier. Turrets are good. Health is great. Cost is affordable, but still expensive. Uh, I'm putting it where it is on the list because of its line of sight and because the it's... It's fighter focused and while that does make it have 
a higher damage potential and just higher potential in general than the Executioner and the Revelation, it's not as practical to get to that potential of damage and usability because you need more players for it. So, it's still a really good carrier. You guys have seen my videos with it. Uh, yeah, Rhino's an A tier. Moving on, Stormbringer, B tier. It's like a Rhino with a bit better turrets, but, uh, and a bit better fighters, except it just looks horrible and it's expensive. Uh, and the turning is not really that impressive, like, at all. Just the speed in general on the Stormbringer is pretty bad. But that's okay, because it's a carrier, it's not meant to be doing PvP stuff, but with its turret loadout, it should be. So it's a Dreadnought with extra steps, but really bad movement. And then there's a couple of medium turrets on it, and a couple of heavy turrets. It's, it's okay, I guess, but... And the health is good, as all carriers are pretty tanky. Um, but that that's basically it. There's not much to say about the Stormbringer anymore. It used to be more unique. But, um... Uh, you can get it if you want, but I wouldn't advise it. It's not ideal. Uh... Vanguard is gonna go S tier. No. It gets A tier. The reason it's not an S tier is because it's blocked behind a paywall of Robux, which is the VIP game pass. Otherwise, it would be S tier. Uh, small, fast, uh, <laughs> battleship sized, slightly smaller than a battleship. <laughs> really good spinals. It's fast again, like fast, fast, like battleship speed, I think. Uh, very, very tanky, much tankier than it used to be. If you see a Vanguard rolling up, you can expect what is basically a battleship, but much, much tankier. That's all I can really say. It's got decent turrets, and it's really good spinals, and that's about it. It's also got two fighters, which are really broken. The models are broken right now, and they do almost no damage. But they're very tanky for their size. And they're almost impossible to hit. Like, I'd put them on par with um, interceptors in terms of how hard it is to hit them. Because they're just so tiny and fast. So you can get two people in the, uh, I think they're Falcons, the Falcon Fighters, which it has. And it just has two of them. And you can drop the Falcon Fighters off at a Starbase. And they'll distract the starbase while you go attack whatever miners or traders or combat ships. Just whatever you feel like attacking there. Feel free to pirate or something. The base is going to be too busy looking at the fighters to do anything about you. And, well, it's a hit and run, basically. Or you can use it for PvP against dreadnoughts or battleships. Yeah, it's just really, really good versatile carrier. And it's cheap! This is the only cheap carrier on the list. This thing's like 100,000, maybe even less credits, I don't know. This, the prices have been changing lately, so I'm not entirely sure. But it is very, 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 very cheap for a carrier. If you have VIP, I recommend you get a Vanguard, like, when, whenever you can. Last but not least, Warlord, D tier. I don't really know much about Warlord. No one really owns Warlord. It's got a couple Raptors uh, as fighters, which are Valkyries, but not as good, pretty much. Uh, decent turrets, somewhat tanky health, definitely better than most Dreadnoughts, I think. Uh, but the speed is questionable. It's a giant Marauder that, it being a giant Marauder, doesn't really have... Uh, it doesn't really cause any problems, but yeah, that's basically what it is. It's not as strong as other similarly priced carriers. Uh, the Raptors are certainly good fighters, but they're nothing crazy special. Well, they're definitely higher end. Um, things like the Valkyries or the Hunters are definitely much better. Uh... Yeah, and I think they're a bit 
shield focused, so you don't have much hull damage out of them. Mm. And that, that's basically the Warlord. And I don't believe it has any real turret firepower on the bottom of it. Uh, and considering its slow speed and turn speed, um, it might be pretty small for a carrier. I think it's the second smallest next to the Vanguard. But it's kind of easy to get under it and just start shooting it, and it can't do much unless it warps away. <sighs> so here we have S plus tier. Borealis, Nimitz, and Nyx. The pinnacle of carriers. S tier, just default superior. You have Executioner, great all around PvP carrier, decent spinals, and the Revelation, which I haven't seen almost anyone with a Revelation in months and months, but you know what? Here it is, anyways, because it's, it's still pretty dang good. A tier. Hevnatir, Rhino, and Vanguard. Vanguard should be S tier, but that VIP Game Pass is holding it back from there, because not everyone can actually get one, and that's the problem. But that's not really a problem, because VIP deserves more ships, because right now it's kind of bad to get other than for the Andromeda and Vanguard specifically. Um, Rhino's good. Decent combat. PvP with turrets. Great support with the fighters, but nothing special it's not on the level of the nimitz or the nyx or the borealis or anything health is great yep <sighs> dild i mean stormbringer uh and rapture rapture could be a tier stormbringer could be a tier but they aren't because they just don't quite cut it in usability or how much people do use them they generally just stay ignored and people don't really get in the fighters or anything and that holds them back from where they could be at. Icarus could be A tier, but it's a same problem except it also is mixed with a bit of the problems the Borealis has. Or I'm the Prometheus, the Borealis doesn't really have many problems other than cost right now. Uh, Warlord, it, it can stay there. It can get changed a bit. I'd say really only its speed needs to be buffed. Because such a small ship shouldn't actually be going that slow. Because it's really just a an oversized Marauder, which is literally just a battlecruiser. But, um, yeah... Prometheus, which was intended to be the best carrier ever made in the game. Like, straight up, this thing was crazy expensive. And right now it costs an estimated 1.5 million credits. <sighs> like, dude. This thing was supposed to be the best carrier in the game. And it got F tier. Devs, fix this. Come on, man. Like, 27,000 health. Stop giving it more health. More health is barely helping it. It needs more survivability other than health. More practicality. The Battlecruiser's fighters are cool and flashy, but they're so unsustainable. They're not fast enough um, to reliably, with their size, avoid heavy turrets from Dreadnoughts and stuff. Unless they're pretty far away. They don't have warp or anything, so they can't escape any ships coming up to them. They're, unless you're an idiot, you can just kill the three Harbinger fighters, and then the Prometheus is almost defenseless. Although I will say it's good just because of how big the explosion is. Like, I've seen this thing wipe fleets, because someone killed it, someone killed the Prometheus, and people were so dumb they actually stuck around. It vaporizes dreadnoughts and even smaller carriers. Like, dude, that 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 thing is no joke. I've been killed from 15,000 studs away by an exploding Prometheus. It... Killing it is like a nuclear bomb, basically. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the carrier tier list for Galaxy. Mm, yeah. There we go, Puffly Please, signing out. See you in the next video.